holes are tapped in the bottom that's done now I want to turn my attention to making the head so it's, it's going to look something like this and of course it's going to bolt right on to the number 440's there but uh, just a word of advice here when you make something small like this whatever you do don't just start out by cutting off a piece that long because there's just no way to hang on to it so I have here a piece of one inch aluminum and it's a handy size just a piece of scrap it's got a hole drilled on the other end I already faced it off but the first thing I'm going to do with it is put it in the closing and turn just a little bit of a step on there that will fit into the bore so that'll be a half inch diameter uh, step oh perhaps uh, a sixteenth or an eighth and, and I may face it down if it's too much so over to the closing I believe I'll just show you at the bench how I did that I got a step on there half inch diameter I just went straight in with my cutoff tool miking it as I went along and that took uh, 90 seconds to do knocked the burr off had quite a bit of a glare there and you can see that that fits in there. Now the reason I wanted the step is so that I can locate it when I transfer the holes. Now there are other ways of doing this. If you do not have transfer punches you can put this back in the milling machine and drill a bolt circle exactly the way I did this only with the clearance size. You would have to find the center of course Let's go through that real quickly in case anybody, anybody wants to do it that way. Here's that alternate way. Now I've got a wiggler with a needle point mounted in the chuck. The work itself is held vertically and you need a, a piece that's short enough to, where you can hold it in a device like this and it's in a v-block so I know it's vertical. And uh, I'm just using the needle point to find the center. Now, while I had this in the lathe, what I did was uh, gently ram the uh, tailstock center against this, and I got a, a, a little bit of a divot in the middle, in other words, a center punch. And using the uh, wiggler, you know, when you first put it in, it's going to wobble like that. So I'll just use something to steady it so you get it to run through like that and then just locate it turn the machine off and locate it and you're going to find the center within a few thousands if you're wearing your optimizer as an alternate, you know, I've shown you all different kinds of uses with an edge finder, but an edge finder can find the edge around stock, too. So you would find the, the edge in the uh, x-axis and then find the edge in the y-axis exactly like I did on the other piece earlier, at which time you will then, after you've found the center, zero out your digital readout and I believe the dimension was 350 in each direction uh, from the center and you're just going to, to drill those holes exactly like we did on the body of the steam engine so that's a way, one, another way of doing it I failed to tell you about uh, the poor man's lap actually it's not a lap but it's an abrasive method uh, use a dowel of the approximate size of the hole it's got to be a little smaller and a bandsaw slit into it and just wrap some emery cloth whatever the coarse whatever coarseness you want put it in the drill press or or lathe and you know run that in there you got to make sure you wrap this in the correct direction so it doesn't bind on you but probably most of you have been using that method that's around since Columbus I think okay now let's talk about locating these holes again and again there's more than one way of do well, well there's many many ways choose your weapon but uh, another way is to and that piece hit the floor I got to retrieve it and uh, this isn't the one I'm building that's that's the other one but using transfer punches 
and I think everybody's got a set of those. You can just lay your pre-drilled head. If you haven't drilled these holes yet, you know, do it this way. Drill these first, then lay it on uh, your work. And it's so much better if you have that little pilot that we talked about that will hold it. And then using the appropriate size of a uh, transfer punch, punch it. And then really what you need to do is stop and drill and tap that one, put one screw in it, and then go and do the other three so it doesn't move on you. All right, I'm not doing it that way, but that's an alternate. I'm going to use transfer screws, and I've shown these many times, and they come in, uh, in different sizes. And this is a 3 8 that's a large one, and I'm showing you that because it's big enough for you to see. Those 440s, you almost can't see. But they screw in, and they have a point on the end. I think I did a whole video on these. This is a little bit of a socket wrench right there. And, of course, they're stored inside, so you don't lose them. And you simply put the transfer screw in there and then screw it into the work. Now, with the uh, 440, you can see how small that is. There's supposed to be six in here. Well, when I open it up, there's only five. Well, then I dropped one. So now there's only four. And I spent ten minutes searching the floor with a broom and a magnet. I never could find it. So uh, I've already installed i got to set that aside. I've already installed the transfer screws in here. Can you see it? And this little socket wrench is so tiny that it's uh, it's out, it's rounded out. So it was terribly hard to set these in here. And I tried to get all four of them perfectly flat. That is so that they're the, the same distance up. I don't mean flat, but they're just protruding a little bit and I can feel those with my finger. Tried to get them all the same, but that's kind of hard to do. And now what I'm going to do is to put the pilot on in the hole and strike it. But this is going to tip over funny, so I'm going to put this in the vise to do that, and then just tap it with a lead hammer, and all four of them should be transferred at the same time. Just a side note, you notice I got long sleeves on because it's cold down here, and I don't want to hear anything from the safety Nazis. As a matter of fact, if you're a safety Nazi, you are banned from these videos, and you have no right watching them. So safety Nazis need not apply. But holding that on, and this is bottomed out and held nicely in the vise, just going to give this a nice smart whack. Like so. Can you see that all four of them are marked? Not just marked, they're center punched and ready to drill. Now, some of them are a little bit deeper than others because, again, I told you that it was very hard to get these all the same distance up. But uh, this is just a wonderful method. And, but these transfer screws aren't cheap, and you need a whole set of them. That is many different sizes. But uh, this may be new to some of you, but uh, uh, it's, uh, they're wonderful. They're wonderful. Okay. After uh, transferring all those holes, I went back to my surface plate, and there is the missing transfer screw. Thank you, Lord. I wasted all that time. But over here at my little uh, micro drill press camera on, I love this thing. I like to spot these holes. This is a 16th inch bit. And it's a uh, Then the holes won't move on you. And I only go in about an eighth of an inch deep. Then over to the big drill press. Now I'm at the Walker Turner drill press. Same setup, but it's a number 33 drill, which is the clearance size for a 440. And I've set the depth stop such that I am drilling uh, about one-fourth deep. 
and I'll drill all four of them. Now it's in the lathe and I'm cutting it off to length. There it is and I have to knock that little nipple off of there. I'm not crazy about the finish that I get with a cut off tool. And in fact I would like very much to have a little step on it like that. And I like that appearance but it's strictly ornamental. But uh, one possibility if I had a chuck that was uh, sharp enough on the jaws to, to attempt to hold it right here face that and put the step on but that's that's kind of risky you know it would fly out the question is now will the holes line up well actually there is no question you know that they will and they're gonna line up in any orientation so you know you do not have to have it marked in any way so that you always put it back together the same and you can make the thickness of the head any thickness that you want mine's you know, just a hair over eighth inch. I happen to like the looks of a socket head cap screws, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, I don't like just a round head slotted screw from the hardware store. It looks, looks too cheap for me, but I'd like to have some button head screws here if I had the right size. Now what I just showed you how to do here, to match up holes on a head like that, uh, Although it looks simple, if you've never done it before and you haven't had some instruction, actually it's a fairly difficult thing to do. And one other method yet that I'm going to tell you about, but I, I know I'm giving you too much information, and that's the way I did it on that Stewart engine when I was 16 years old. My dad showed me how. Go ahead and make the head, and then uh, to put it on the drill press, you'll have a layout, and drill right through the head and into the cylinder block. Take it apart, tap that hole, drill the clearance hole in the head, and screw it on. And then go around and do the other ones, one at a time. And again, you can't miss by that method. They're going to line up. But use a little uh, uh, witness mark there so you can reassemble it the same. I don't need a witness mark on mine. All right, we're done with the head. And one other thing on the head. Uh, on, at final assembly, if you want, you could make a gasket, but that's way too tedious. Or you could seal it with some silicone or whatever you want, but I just don't think there's a need with the low pressure. If you're running it on steam, you might have a little leakage there, but it's going to be minimal. But at three or four or five pounds of, of air, you're not going to see a leak or notice it. I'm going to make the base next, but you can do this in any order that you want, but uh, I feel like doing something easy. So this is half inch aluminum plate, and this is the piece that got that terrible corrosion on it. From well, I showed you that out in my garage when uh, some of that uh, material called shock that I use in my foundry dripped on that and just corroded that, and you can feel the depth of the corrosion. It all happened in a several week period. So I'm avoiding using that end and I've already done some milling here and squared this up on these two ends because this was just rough sawn. And I put some uh, layout die on there and I just uh, marked it three inches by three inches just with a combination square. And I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and saw that out off camera. I just sawed that out on my bandsaw. It only took 90 seconds and I discovered that if I put just a little bit of that kerosene on the bandsaw blade with a brush that it sure keeps the the teeth from uh, uh, loading up, it, it just, it's a good idea, a good idea. All right, I'm uh, going to mill right down to my line. I got it mounted in the vise, and I'll do both rough saw and sides that way. Let's talk about corner treatment here on the base. You don't have to do anything. You can uh, just leave it like this. This is done, uh, I call it a cove, and I did that with a ball end mill. And uh, this is a 45 degree angle, and that's what I'm gonna do on uh, today's project. And there are different ways of doing this. You can do it by tilting the head on the milling machine, and I just dread tilting the head, so I'm not doing that. I'm using an end mill that has an angle on the end of it, but. Uh, 
Uh, do it any way you want. You can also uh, hold your work at an angle in the vise, but it may be difficult to get all four corners exactly the same so that the distance across the flat is exactly the same and that they meet up at the corner and are visually attractive and appealing right there. So here's how I do it. I've already done one corner and notice the end mill that is at 45 degree angle at the end. I'll show you that later in case you can't see that right now. Notice that I'm up on inch and a quarter parallels so I will not strike the vise and that I am up against a stop. That's my homemade stop that I've had for years but you can uh, use any kind of stop you want but that's important that it always be at the same uh, distance this way. You can also use just a straight edge or a parallel against there when you uh, tighten the vise and shove it up against that'll work as well. So let's look at that. By the way, I just oiled my um, milling machine with the Bijou oiler. It took two seconds. Now this finish will not be very good because I'm conventional milling. So I'm raising the table three thousandths which I've already calculated and going back in the other direction climb milling and that will give me a, uh, a decent finish. So right now I'm only taking off a few thousandths. And I will do all four corners like this. It only takes a few minutes. I forget to tell you things, so I'm backing up again to lapping. Uh, when we add the lapping compound to the lap, it's called charging. So when you saw me rub that on, I was charging the lap. All right, uh, I finished this. Now that was done. These are 45s. It was done with uh, this kind of end mill. That's 45 on the end. More than likely you do not have one of those, but that's how I did it. You can also tilt your work and mill it with a, a regular end mill, end mill at, uh, like this. But it's hard to, to get it uh, in the same position on the mill each time you rotate it so that, that all of your, uh, your chamfers are of equal width here between my fingernails. And you can make that chamfer any uh, width that you want. This just happens to be, as far as I'm concerned, a pretty good eye appeal. You can make this kind of edge, too, a fully rounded edge. I'm not crazy about it, actually, but that's done with uh, this type of cutter. And then, finally, this one, which I call a cove was done with a ball end mill and ball end mills are available in many different uh, sizes so you can experiment with that to find out what looks good and th these are some samples I did a long time ago those are also corner edges that you might see on woodworking all right now that I've beaten that uh, subject to death on to the next step I've decided to drill the steam inlet next. Now this was 8th inch OD hobby brass that I've talked so much about and it's just held in with Loctite and I don't want to use Loctite because I intend to run this thing I think under uh, live steam and I don't want that to fly out if it gets too hot. So in fact I made this little nipple here out of brass and it's 3 16 diameter that's a 1032 thread on there and a three thirty seconds hole and I may open that hole up later if it's not uh, big enough. Anyway that is going to be threaded into the hole that I intend to drill and tap right there. Might be longer than I need. Now this can be done uh, any place here. It could be on this side or this side. It doesn't matter. 
but I'm going to arbitrarily choose this side, side and I've already laid it out such that it's 5 8 from the top and in line with the center of this steam uh, valve which is 1 and 5 8 measuring 1 and 5 8 from this edge over to the center. Now you can't measure from here because remember I milled that off so we lost that dimension this has to be our our point of uh, location so I will drill that then uh, number 21 not through both walls just through one wall that's a, a again a 21 and tap it 1032 I'm gonna do that off camera because that's pretty uh, mundane stuff